is right around the corner. And if you haven't already made your menu, prepped, or even put a few dishes you've already made away, honey, what are you doing? We are not trying to spend all day in the kitchen on Thanksgiving anymore. I'm over that. But if you haven't started, don't worry, sister, brother, okay, I got you, all right? Not only do I have a menu for you, but I also have a Thanksgiving timetable to show you what you can be doing from now all the way up to Thanksgiving Day so that you don't have to be spending all day in the kitchen. And this doesn't just involve just freezing a bunch of stuff. I have some real genuine tips that will help anybody, even if you have a small kitchen like me. This is my Thanksgiving menu. I just decided to make it really cute on Canva so it can be printed out in color and framed during the holidays. Now I am gonna do smothered turkey wings as well as a lot of sides and two desserts as you can see here, okay? So in the description, I'm gonna link all of these recipes and I'll also be showing you some of those recipes in the video. However, Southern Touch is my ebook that has every recipe you will need for the holidays, so please check that out. Are you more of a side chick or a main chick? Because during the holidays, I ain't gonna be honest with you, I'm more of a side chick, okay? That's why you knew, you see I got like six, seven sides, all right? But the turkey, you know, the main ain't bad neither, okay? Now, a lot of people want to do a whole turkey. However, I am going to be doing turkey and brown gravy. I like doing that because I get my gravy and my turkey at the same time. And to me, it's quicker and tastier because everybody like that white meat. Now, I'm gonna take some turkey wings and I'm going to season them well with whatever I have okay so I'm using a chicken bouillon smoked paprika garlic powder onion powder chicken seasoning all right you just want to get in there and season it well but don't use too much salt because there will be a good amount of salt that you have in the gravy you know you just got to cover your meat all right I'm also going to add some fresh herbs from my garden, so some thyme and some sage and rosemary. If you keep watching, I'll actually show you some clips of my garden. So many people have asked, so I got a couple clips together for you guys when I was harvesting these herbs. Now I'm gonna spread them all over the turkey because they're gonna add a great freshness to the gravy. I'm also going to put in about two cups of water. You don't want the turkey to dry out in the oven and I am going to be cooking this uncovered because I want it to get brown, okay? Y'all know the melanated people like the melanated meat, okay? To help it get brown and also add a great flavor, I'm gonna put a few pats of unsalted butter. I'm gonna stick this in the oven uncovered at 375 degrees for an hour and a half. You can check on it periodically and baste it, but for the most part, it's gonna be pretty hands off. For the gravy, I'm using one can of cream of chicken, I'm gonna fill that can with some water and put that in there and also use a packet of brown gravy. Now, if you just love gravy, like you're doing mashed potatoes, or of course you can do the, put the gravy on the dressing or rice, then you can simply double the gravy. However, I do suggest using that 30% reduced sodium brown gravy mix because there's so much salt in that cream of chicken, you don't want it to get out of hand. And while it cooks a second time, the gravy really reduces and the seasonings are going to concentrate. So here you can see my nice brown turkey wings and onto them, I'm gonna add a sliced up onion as well as some sliced peppers and some just roughly cut garlic. I love those little fresh things to add, just makes your gravy taste so good. And then I'm gonna pour this gravy all over the turkey wings. You wanna mix everything well, but also flip your wings because you know, one side is melanated and the other side is light skin. Okay, it's like your, your arm. You know how the top of your arm is brown, but at the bottom of your arm is light skin. So you got to flip it, okay, so that we don't have that problem with the turkey wings, okay? I went in with a little bit of extra seasoning. I added a little bit more Creole seasoning, a little bit of more butter seasoning, garlic butter seasoning. I mixed everything up and then I flipped them wings, okay? So we don't got the, the light skinned side of the turkey no more, okay? I am going to stick this back in the oven to cook for about 30 more minutes until that side is brown and the onions are nice and soft. You can go anywhere from 30 to maximum 35 minutes. When I tell you these turkey wings are good, baby, they are nice and tender. You got your gravy. Remember, if you want that extra gravy, you just double it, okay? You can just have this just swimming in gravy, okay, if you want to.
this turkey is super hands off and because it's only in one pan and it's not this huge bird okay you have a lot more room in the oven to make other dishes while you're cooking this turkey and i'm just going to show y'all how delicious this is let me know if you would add this to your thanksgiving menu check out my thanksgiving timetable so not only does this have the menu but this also is going to show you what i am doing weeks in advance two weeks before you can make your cranberry sauce your butter pie crust your sweet potato filling i actually made a video on how to do that i'll link that in the description now you can make your cranberry sauce so early because it is super acidic so it's not going to go bad you can see here that I really space out the work so that it does not become too much on one day. And it also doesn't completely take over my freezer or fridge. Now the real goal here is what to do the day of Thanksgiving. I don't really start cooking even till 12, but whatever time you wanna eat, you basically put that at the bottom and then you work backwards, especially on how to use the oven space. So I've timed everything from when it needs to go in the oven or when I need to make it so that it will be hot by the time dinner is ready. Cranberry sauce ain't nothing but some jelly and it can last so long in the fridge because it's quite acidic so it can really be made really three weeks in advance but two weeks for me is you know just fine and you can also can this if you do like some stovetop canning you could preserve this all the way up to Easter actually. My recipe is extremely delicious. I just combined 12 ounces of cranberries with a cup of pineapple juice and a cup of crushed pineapples, a 15 ounce can of mandarin oranges, and some strawberry jello. I know some of y'all were not expecting this, but this strawberry jello or the orange one tastes fantastic in a cranberry relish. I'm then gonna simmer this for about five to seven minutes, Cut off the eye, let it cool completely, and add in about a half of a cup of pecans. Overnight, it's going to firm up and become the best cranberry relish that you have ever had. On Thanksgiving Day, the real battle is for the oven space. So many things have to be put in an oven, and if you don't have a double oven, what are you going to do? Okay, so what you're going to do is this. First, you're going to plan items that can all be baked at the same temperature. Every recipe I show you can be cooked at 375 degrees. That way these all can be cooking at the same time. You're also gonna make at least one item that needs to be cooked in the oven ahead of time. So in this case, I'm making the corn pudding in advance. I'm gonna wrap it up and then I am going to freeze it. But if there's anything that I will not make early, it's that mac and cheese. Okay, mac and cheese got to be served hot and fresh out of the oven so don't you dare do that one in advance mm -mm, okay this is one of my gardens so i have two this is one that i do at my school with my students and as you can see we have some beautiful collard greens mustard greens kale lots of herbs growing and y'all these greens are really good now right now the kids are not in session so they cannot pick these greens so i am going to be harvesting them for them and so as you can look on the back side, there are some little critters, okay, trying to come along for the ride, bugs. This is why you see me wash my greens so well. This is one of the rosemary bushes I planted with the students about three years ago. And these are some collard greens that actually just come up on their own. I let them self seed and every year they just come back. So that's why they're growing out of this rosemary bush. The rosemary bush seems happy and the collard greens look good. So I just leave them. I'm going to pick some rosemary as well as some thyme. That's the same herbs that I use to cook the turkey. Thyme is absolutely one of my favorite herbs. It's very low maintenance. This doesn't even get water. It just gets that regular rainwater. And I don't have to do anything to really maintain these gardens in the ground. So this is my harvest. This is a huge bag of greens. I'm going to show you how to make some fried mustard and turnip greens, which I'll be preparing on thanksgiving with these same greens let me know in the comments if you are a gardener and if you have been loving some garden greens y'all those greens at the store have been looking atrocious when i tell you they've been looking absolutely terrible i am grateful to have some greens that i've been growing because the collard greens especially have been looking super wilted Ugh. 
I just cannot. I just cannot. All right. While you saw that these greens are not super dirty because the ones that are in the earth boxes aren't growing in a lot of dirt, you know, on them, but they are buggy. All right, there's a lot of little bug eggs and stuff that are easily dislodged with sow suds. If you've been watching me for any period of time, you know this is my favorite way to clean greens. I just add a little bit of this cleaner, agitate them for a few minutes, and then they are nice and clean. That surfactant really lifts off those eggs and bugs, and actually the soap can smother the bugs. And then I rinse them very, very well. All right, I'm gonna chop these into about one inch pieces. They're going to cook down. Remember mustard greens, turnip greens, they're very, very tender. So even if you cut them big, they are going to shrink. Then I'm gonna place them to the side in my bowl. Unlike collard greens, the stems of mustard and turnip greens are really tender. So I'm just gonna chop them finely and I'm gonna fry them up as well. Have you guys ever had fried mustard and turnip greens? This is something my mom used to make a lot on Sunday when I was a kid and I used to love it. I'm gonna tell you I used to eat it up. I actually like them better than your traditional collard greens. And I like doing them on Thanksgiving because they're fairly quick to make. They only take a few minutes to prepare, unlike collards where you have to dedicate like two hours or more to making them. So in my pan, I've added some fat back as well as some bacon grease, onions, butter, you know, that country stuff, okay? I've sauteed some onions and that deliciousness and then threw in like two cloves of garlic. You don't get super garlicky with this recipe, all right? And then once that's nice and fragrant, I'm going to throw in about half of my greens. Now, Sister Mabel, y'all, that's my cast iron skillet. She can't take all of them at one time. It's just too much. So once the first batch of greens wilts down, that'll take about five or six minutes. You just, you know, turn it from time to time. Let the heat from the bottom get to the top, okay? Then I'm going to go in and put in the rest of my greens. To encourage the greens to release their water, I'm going to put a little bit of salt over the top. There is some salt from that fat back, so I don't want to get crazy with it initially, but you do need these to start cooking down. You're going to notice that a lot of water will render out of these greens, and we have to cook that out of this dish. So I'm going to crank up the, the heat to like medium high, and I'm going to just start frying this until that water evaporates. I season this with a little bit of crushed red pepper, a little bit of sugar, black pepper. You know, you can use any seasonings you like. I put a little apple cider vinegar in here and I just cook them until a lot of that moisture content was down. Guys, make this recipe two or three times because folks gonna love it. In my Thanksgiving menu, I'm making sweet potato pie as well as banana pudding. You do not have to go through the effort of making a pie crust from scratch. For the holidays, I just love that homemade taste. So I am going to make my pie crust and I'm going to make them about two weeks in advance. I'm going to wrap them up and I'm going to put them in the freezer. However, if you want, you can just get a deep dish pie crust from the store to save time. I have taken my prepared all butter pie crust out of the freezer and I've let them kind of de-thaw a bit in the refrigerator so that I could work them more easily. But even still, an all butter pie crust can, you know, it can try to challenge you, okay? Because it's that butter and it doesn't have any shortening in it, you know, it's a bit stiffer. So sometimes I even have to use my rolling pin just to loosen it up so that it becomes more workable. But what you're gonna see later on is that I actually have to like put my back into getting this pie crust to roll out. Now for the holidays, I don't mind doing all this because the taste, mm, y'all, the taste is incredible. This crust is incredibly flaky, very buttery. It literally cannot even be compared to that of a store-bought crust. However, you know, look, you do what makes you feel good, okay? So if you wanna buy one, you go ahead and buy one. I have a really big pie plate. It is nine and a half inches and it's quite deep. 
So instead of this recipe making two crusts, I made one and a half crusts. So I took one and a half parts of the dough to make one crust. So I have another half of a pie crust left in my freezer and I'll just combine that with another pie recipe. I do it this way because I wanna make sure that I have a really nice crust so that when I par bake this, my pie does not slide down. If you are using a smaller pie dish, then you could divide the recipe just in half to make two crusts. Now an all butter crust does take a little bit extra effort because after you form it and prick it, you need to place this in the freezer for at least one hour so that it can become frozen. Do not skip this step. If you skip it, you will regret. I'm telling you that, okay? It needs to be cold so that it stays together better in the fridge. This is very different than a crust that has butter and shortening. I balled up that parchment paper so that I could stick it into my frozen pie crust. I am going to add some dried black beans as my pie weights. This is one pound of black beans and I just use these as pie weights only. I'm going to stick this in a 375 degree oven for 15 minutes. While that is baking, I can put together my sweet potato pie filling super quickly. So if you made that make ahead sweet potato filling with me, you will have these frozen bags of pie filling. And if you haven't made it, go over to that video, watch it. I'm going to link it and you make this filling, okay? This will defrost in no time. Because this is such a big pie, I'm using three and a half cups of the filling. Into that, I'm adding three fourths of a cup of heavy cream, three tablespoons of butter, and two eggs. I'm gonna mix this together. And that is it, y'all. The sugar is already in here, the flavorings, all of that is already in the filling. I encourage you to make this filling and put it in the freezer, even for pies that you wanna make in Easter or even during the summer, because right now, sweet potatoes are at their prime. After 15 minutes, my shale comes out of the oven and I'm going to remove these pie weights. Under this, guys, don't get scared, okay? There's a lot of butter. Don't worry about that. Just prick your pie crust again and stick it back into the oven for about five to seven more minutes until it is lightly golden. At that point, you're gonna see that there's some flakes at the bottom. So you can tell this is gonna be a super flaky pie. I'm gonna add all of that filling into my pie shell. I'm gonna turn the oven down to 350 degrees and cook this for about 60 to 65 minutes. My pie is so thick, it's really gonna take a little extra time. If you're using thinner pies, of course, it will be a bit quicker. I saw that my crust was getting a little too brown, so I ended up adding some little pieces of foil on it while it was cooking, and then I allowed this to cool overnight. Y'all, this pie is so good. The only thing that I do not like about this pie dish is because it is so deep and this crust is so crispy, the first piece of pie always comes out ugly. If you decided to use a store-bought pie crust, you can tell that this pie would literally come together in minutes. Y'all, this is so creamy and delicious. And in the description, I will tell you some of my suggestions and also link a sweet potato pie recipe if you don't wanna do the make ahead filling. I am also going to be making the dinner rolls the night before. Because I'm making them with sweet potato, they're going to stay moist and not get all dry. And they will easily heat up the next day. These sweet potato rolls are very similar to the way you might get a potato roll at the store or make a potato roll. They don't have a super distinct sweet potato flavor, but they do have a beautiful color and the sweet potato helps them to stay very moist, especially since you're going to be making them ahead of time. The most flour you will use for this entire recipe is four and a half cups. So that is what I measured out. So I'm taking all the flour from that bowl. Into one cup of that flour, add sugar, some spices, and a packet of instant yeast. Mix that until it is well combined. Then take half of a cup of whole milk and add three tablespoons of butter. You're gonna heat that for about 30 to 45 seconds. Don't do more than that because you don't want this to become piping hot. I cut the butter up just so that it would melt a little bit easier. 
Then into a little well I make in the flour mixture, I'm gonna add one cup of sweet potato. When I make the sweet potato for the pies, I just add a extra cup that I do not season and I save that cup. I'm also going to add the milk, the butter, and the egg, and I'm going to add about two more cups of the flour. I'm going to start to mix this until a shaggy dough starts to form. At some point, it's going, you're going to get to the place where the spoon just ain't going to work no more. Okay, you're just going to have to do old school and you're just going to have to put your hand into it. Okay, so that's where I'm at now. And so I am going to start trying to knead this. The dough is still sticky to the touch. So I'm going to add a half a cup more flour and I'm going to start to knead and mix this until the dough is no longer sticky. And it may also be very slightly elastic. This will take about three to four minutes. As I was kneading this, I just couldn't control the bowl anymore. So I took a tea towel and I placed it under the bowl and I just kept working the dough. As long as there's extra flour on the side of the bowl, I don't add any more. But when it goes away, I'll just put in a little bit here and there. Remember, you may not use up the whole four and a half cups and that is okay. You just need to add flour until the dough is no longer sticky and you don't want to have a bunch of extra flour that you put in the dough because then it might become tough. So at this point, I realized the dough is, is good. Okay, there's a little flour left in the bowl, but that's not a problem. I'm just going to dust it onto the top of the dough. And then I'm going to cover the dough with the tea towel. And I'm going to allow it to rest in a warm place for about 20 minutes. It's okay if it doesn't double in size because the dough is going to rest again once we put them into the rolls. So I'm going to clean off my work surface and then I'm going to add the flour. Now this flour is flour again from that bowl. Okay. I'm going to add the dough and then I am going to cut this dough into four equal ish pieces. Y'all know it ain't always super equal, you know, when home cooks do stuff, but you know, do the best that you can. Okay. Have y'all ever made anything like sweet potato rolls or even just potato rolls? I really love them because they are just so freaking moist and they just have a really nice texture to them. Let me know in the comments. I'm then going to cut all of those four pieces into four other equal-ish pieces, okay? We're trying to have a total of about 16 rolls. I love mine to be extra buttery. Y'all know I'm a Southern woman. We like butter, okay? So I am gonna take some room temperature butter and I'm just gonna put it on my fingers and just tuck it into each roll and put it around each roll. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to just push the each dough piece into a roll-like shape. That's just gonna tuck some extra buttery goodness into the rolls and just make them really good. I promise you will notice a difference in the flavor, especially if you are using a high quality butter. Once I rub the butter onto the piece of dough, I then just take my fingers and pinch back the edges and tuck them under and then I'll just roll them until I get a little ball. I'm going to place them in a 9 by 13 inch baking dish that has been greased with some more butter. Yes, y'all, some more butter. I'm going to put them all in there and then I'm going to cover this with a tea towel and let this rise in a warm place for at least one hour. You will see them almost double in size. Brush the tops with a little bit of heavy cream or an egg wash to encourage them to get brown and then stick these in a 375 degree oven for about 25 to 28 minutes until the tops are nice and golden brown and they are cooked thoroughly. Mmm, y'all, the smell on these rolls is so good, but we are going to take them to the next level I combine about a tablespoon of honey with a tablespoon and a half of butter and some clipped rosemary and thyme and I brushed it on the top of the rolls. Oh my goodness, that sweet herby butteriness on these warm rolls is just divine. Let me know if you are going to try these sweet potato rolls. They are so good and they actually reheat really well the next day. 
All right, y'all. I hope you all enjoyed these tips. Tell me what you took from this video that is going to help you with your holiday. You guys know I love you and Jesus loves you. And I hope you all have a blessed and wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye.